Good morning, Washington. Wanted to post this little video to explain a little bit about the changes coming July 1st in your interactions with your local gun shop. Uh, lots of different things are going into effect. Today, we're just gonna talk about uh, the one, and that is the courtesy check performed by FFLs uh, at the time of purchase. And uh, Washington uh, has been on notice for over a year from the FBI and the NICS background check system that Washington CPL, or the concealed pistol license, meets the re federal requirements to not require a background check at time of purchase. However, state law requires that there is one even if you carry a concealed weapons permit. So uh, the FBI, uh, their system is overwhelmed. They have uh, told the state of Washington uh, in excess of a year ago that that needed to change. So they would no longer allow dealers to run NICS checks and the background checks on anything other than a, a, a bolt action rifle, a lever action, or smooth bore shotgun. Uh, so all handgun purchases. Now where you used to be able to purchase, we do the instant background check via the NICS system, and, and then you, uh, with, a, uh, with a, an approval, you get to leave with the firearm that day. Uh, that will no longer happen as of July 1st. Uh, we will be required to store that firearm uh, until we have law enforcement approval. The same way you would as if you did not carry a concealed weapons permit. So uh, that's going to result in additional trips to the gun shops, additional travel expenses, additional delays in you exercising your Second Amendment rights. Uh, the state has approved a budget to look into uh, a new statewide uh, point of uh, uh, contact system so that the state would be responsible for doing everything as opposed to the uh, the mishmash of law enforcement agencies around the state that we have to figure out uh, where to send the uh, applications to so a lot going on but just be aware uh, and, and don't take it out on your dealers it's not their fault uh, um, th there are lots of people that are fighting to get this changed and get it fixed so that you can exercise your constitutional rights without an excessive delay mandated by the state. Uh, we continue to see concealed weapons permit holders being ostracized and, uh, and, and made to be the bad guy. Uh, that's happened in the state legislature earlier this year. That bill did not pass, but it's still alive, so it could come back in the next session, requiring additional training and fees and costs uh, for concealed weapon permit holders to obtain that license. Um, or that permit. Um, so lots of changes coming. Uh, understand them. Uh, ask your dealers about them. Don't spread bad information if you don't know uh, exactly what you're uh, uh, you're talking about. Make sure you get good information first. But just understand there uh, there's going to be extra trips to the shops uh, to complete your transactions. There's going to be extra costs associated with things down the road. Uh, our transfer fee price is going up because we're gonna have multiple contacts uh, with the customers on, uh, on those items because we won't be able to deliver them the same day. Uh, and we're gonna to have to store them for longer periods of time. So we're having to clear out room in our, our storage space. So uh, pay attention, uh, get involved, uh, donate to the Second Amendment Foundation, uh, uh, call your legislators, just get involved. We have to push back. When your legislators are home, like right now, uh, push back and, uh, and, and talk to them, uh, get your friends out to the range, get your families out to the range, educate them on safe and responsible firearm use. Uh, go out and seek training uh, and practice. That is what makes you a better marksman and, uh, and it's still an awful lot of fun. So until we get to the next topic, uh, everybody have a great Memorial Day weekend.